Hey GearHeads, Jeff with Gear Report. I'm here at Philmont Scout Ranch answering a question that came in uh, through, through our Philmont Trek Prep group about winter adventure. Folks have, have wanted some more detail on what that entails. Luke Boone, we, we ambushed him in the uh, camping office and he was kind enough to step out and give us some background, some information. So take it away, tell us about winter adventure. Awesome, awesome. So uh, I'll be the winter adventure coordinator and every year we have five guides that take groups out from the beginning of January to the end of March. And it's one of our secret hidden programs. So yeah. we'll take groups out starting on December 28th. We do our holiday package where you can come out for a weekend and you'll go camp up at, for those of you who are familiar with the backcountry camps, Miranda. We stay in that beautiful meadow nice. while it's covered with snow, framed by Baldy in the background. And we'll do programs like sledding and cross country skiing and snowshoeing. And we'll teach scouts who maybe have never experienced snow. We had a lot of those last year mm -hmm. to how to build Quincy's and, and cook and do uh, cold weather first aid and how to just thrive and have that more nice. a year round backcountry experience that many many scouts don't get the chance to do right so what is a quincy yeah great question uh so a quincy is this six seven foot high pile of snow the scouts will pile up the snow and they let it settle mm -hmm. and then we hollow it out oh, nice. and then we sleep in it for the night and because of that when we hollow it out it's actually insulated from the cold on the outside wow. And you're able to get, sometimes you can get two people. We've made them as big as a four-man Quincy to be able to sleep in. And with that body heat, it's a, it's a very, very comfortable awesome. night's rest inside a, a yeah. snow cave, basically. All right. Well, I've learned something already. That's, uh, wouldn't expect to learn that. Registration deadline. Yeah. You know, I, I've only done summer treks here. I kind of know how that works. Yeah. How, how does it work for winter adventure? Absolutely. So it's, it's kind of a surprise to hear our numbers. You know, we had 24,000 this summer, mm -hmm. but then we come into our autumn and winter and, mm -hmm. and many people just don't know about it. Right. In my opportunities, we have treks in the fall and in the winter. And usually we have openings right up until they start. So oh, wow. for winter right now, we're, we're getting filled up for the New Year's section, mm -hmm. which is kind of our most popular time. Uh, but we do holiday weekends all the way through January and February. We do President's Weekend and Martin Luther King Weekend and some of those other ones. If you have openings to come out, wow. uh, we, we have the guides and the people to make it work. So, so okay, so I'm going to, we're talking about winter adventure, but you mentioned fall treks. I'm thinking that's what I've heard other adults who are going to be crew advisors yeah. for a summer trek talk about coming out as I guess a crew of adults yeah. so maybe maybe it's a big group that's going to split into two or three crews so they're going to have you know six or eight or nine adults mm -hmm. is that what they're talking about kind of a shorter not a full yeah. 11 days but something so they can wrap their heads around everything yeah and that's that's kind of the really cool thing with our off-season program is that you can really design your own trek you can come out and, and we just try to help facilitate what your needs are. If you just want to right. come out and, and hike and have a good time, we can do that. Nice. But we also have, usually every fall, we have a group of advisors, a couple groups maybe, that come out and they want to learn. We usually have rangers that are part of our guide crew. And so they'll tell you, they'll go through the ranger training of what to expect for your shakedown, for right. campsite setup, and nice. go through those processes. So then those advisors can go back and teach their crews and, and kind of prep for that. Yeah, okay, so there's some bonus information for you. Uh, to get back to winter adventure, I've done a couple summer treks. I have a pretty good feel for what kind of gear you need for that. I'm thinking it's gonna be different. So what's yeah. kind of the high level, big things that are different if you wanna come out for winter adventure? Correct, so the big things are gonna be sleeping bags. Uh, most people don't have a zero degree sleeping bags, but right. that's, a, that's a key element. And one of the things that's really cool about our program as well is that all that you really need is a base layer. If you have a base layer, wool base layers, and maybe some warm socks, if you come to Philmont, we have everything else for you. Oh, you can, interesting. You can, and you don't, doesn't, doesn't come at any cost. It's included in your fee. You can borrow our sleeping bags. We have liners. We have uh, layers. We have mid layers. We have outer layers. We have boots. Uh, we wow. have everything that you would need besides those those base layers so it's a really it can be expensive to get into cold weather camping and so this is an easy way to come yeah experience that's, see that's if a you huge like deal it. and when i had heard of winter adventure the first time that was honestly yeah. kind of an instant disqualifier for me is you know it, it we, we're gear report right we, we yeah. report on gear gear is what i think about first right and 
I'm from North Carolina. We don't have <laughs> winter the way the way you're describing. I was like, well, I can't afford all that gear. This is out. That's mm-hmm. not going to happen. But that flips that whole dynamic on its head. Yeah. Um, okay. So how about uh, requirements? What do you, what do you have to do to qualify to to come out and do winter adventure? So it's the same qualifications for the summer. Okay. Uh, so 14 uh, to but we don't really have an, an, a max age range. You know, we had a gentleman out here last winter, I think he was 78, was doing our winter camp. He camped out for, for two nights and <laughs> lovely said he felt younger after spending nice. a couple nights in the nice. sub-zero temperatures. But uh, so that's our, our youngest age range. Now we did open up this past winter. There were some younger scouts that were able to come out. We have a new program uh, called our Cabanita program. So uh, if they're younger than 14, we have, this is the, one of the first times we've made an exception and they stay in a cabin uh, not, not really, we don't necessarily let them get out into the sub-zero temperatures. We right. want to make sure that they're slowly broken into that right. uh, sort of experience, mm-hmm. but they're, they're still introduced into that, that outdoor experience. Interesting. Yeah, that's, right. that's our requirements. And then uh, I, did, I did forget to mention the, that the seven-day treks. I would like to, okay. if I yeah, can absolutely. Pick, pick your brain on that yeah. one. So that, that is that new program that we are offering. We started with last winter. Mm-hmm. And in kind of response to the fire that happened, we had mm-hmm. this huge waiting list and we realized that with our weather here in March, we have uh, a climate that allows us to go trekking in March. Hmm. And so we started having seven day trek opportunities nice. in March. So that's a whole month is just focused on treks. Wow. And in seven days you come out and you spend the whole week with us. One of the cool things, once again, as with Winter Adventures, that we tailor that experience to those crews when they come out. So we'll ask you, would you like to do blacksmithing? Oh, would wow. you like to do tomahawk throwing? Would you like to do black powder rifle shooting? Would you like to do cope? Uh, we have an ATV program here. and We, we reach out yeah. weeks in advance to that crew. And we find out kind of the program that they would like to experience here at Philmont. Right. And we try to really tailor that track to what they would like to experience here on top of hiking 30 plus miles and, and yeah, doing a yeah. conservation project. And one of the really special things for those who are interested in patches mm-hmm. is that you still get your arrowhead patch. Ah. And it's a unique patch that says winter trek on the bottom as well. So it's a very, very unique patch. Right now, we mm-hmm. only had about 50 people this past winter. So there's only about 50 right. people out there with this winter trek arrowhead patch. Yeah, I, I know someone that will probably come out just to get the patch actually. Go. Uh, what do you think, Will? I'm going to ask the cameraman here. You think Mickey will come out just to get the patch? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think he will. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that that all sounds pretty awesome. And the wheels were turning here a minute ago. If you notice the quizzical look on my face, um, I was thinking, wait a second, March, this kind of lines up with spring break. Right? It does, yeah. Yeah, because initially you said March and a week long trek, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, but I got to work and the kids are in school, but hey, this could actually line up. So, um, is, is cost nailed down on those for, for this coming? Do you know I, what I believe be? so. So, okay. uh, David O'Neill is the, the director of uh, program for that. Okay. And I believe that we have all of our updated prices online for Winter Adventure. You just can go to okay. our, our after or our programs on the Philmont website, be able to find Winter Adventure. And I know for sure that we have openings for March for our seven day treks. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we do have a couple spots available still in the January and February weekend uh, Winter Adventure, typical Winter Adventure program. Okay. So for summer treks, you have a big PDF file that people can download that has every bit of information in it. Mm -hmm. Are there similar resources if people want to kind of self-serve before calling you or calling David? um, What what can they do to kind of find some information for themselves? So so we do have information about all of our different programs from the winter adventure to the seven day treks. There's a lot of material that they can read online once again on the the Philmont website. But if you're wanting more information, say on the gear and things along those lines that might be required or that you could bring and right. and maybe even some training suggestions, that one uh, you would reach out to David, David okay. O'Neill, and he has uh, basically a, a a PDF that he'll send to you that's winter specific and it does have some similarities if you have come on that summer trek you'll Mm -hmm. see some of those preparation similarities right but uh, then it is tailored more towards a winter experience here and preparing for that okay I think you said about 30 miles uh, for that so is it like generally reduced mileage per day because you got the extra gear or so that that's one of the things that we 
with it being in March is we ran into this year is we did bump into some snow. There's mm -hmm. still some mm -hmm. snow that we have to kind of interact with and navigate, which is why it was a lower mileage because hmm. there was an aspect okay. of carrying a backpack, but then having to put on snowshoes right. and snowshoe for a little bit, which is, yeah. you know, more exerting. And yeah. so that's something that we try to balance because we don't want to devalue the summer experience. Yeah. And giving in, we want to make it so that when you earn that arrowhead patch, you you know you earned the arrowhead patch. Right. Yeah. Um, and so this year we're we're going to be uh, setting up, trying to set up more itineraries, more itinerary options. Before, because of the snow that we had, we were limited to the North Country. Mm -hmm. uh, so this this March we're going to be trying to get into the South Country more and okay. trying to uh, have many different options for those treks and and trying to up that mileage. We always want to try to. Uh, increase that that difficulty to really push mm -hmm. and challenge mm -hmm. scouts when they come here nice yeah all right a any other closing thoughts i think we've exhausted my questions <laughs> for now uh it's i would just say that this is one of those unique experiences many scouts think that they're limited to summer mm -hmm. in in getting into the outdoors and one of the things that uh, for me personally and then for the winter guide staff here is that we love it and we love being right. able to show people that most people think that winter is tied directly into suffering. You have to suffer <laughs> through a winter camp out. And, and that's not the case. And you a you lot could of times, tell I was thinking that apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you have the proper training and you, you get, and we teach everybody about the gear mm -hmm. and about how to stay warm and, and about eating the right, right foods mm -hmm. and, and proper gear maintenance and mm -hmm. stuff when you're in the back country, it, it can be a blast and that's what we strive to do is show people that there's a, a whole unexplored season out there for scouts yeah. to be getting out into safely Absolutely. and, and enjoyably. Excellent. Luke, thank you. Absolutely, I really sir. appreciate all that yeah, information. Thank you and, for the opportunity. And for anyone wondering, he wasn't expecting to do this. So this <laughs> smooth delivery description of the program was all impromptu. I really appreciate letting us kind of crash your uh, work day yeah, and, and get that information to share. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If I can't find an answer, I'll reach out and get the answer. Or as Luke said, uh, you can reach out through Philmont and, uh, and get the answer direct from, uh, I'm going to say the horse's mouth. Don't take yeah. it the wrong way. We like horses here at Philmont, right? <laughs> That's it for now. Until later, we'll see you on the trail.